start off, we have, whoops, let's see. Again, Dano, the wind, the troublemaker, the book that keeps falling is Postscripts, but this is then, then we have, a very short oh no uh, I kind of why did I thought this was a good idea hello friends welcome to turning pages my name is Aruj and today we're going to find out how many books do I have in these three boxes let's find out So you might be asking, Aruj, why are your books in the box? Um, I just moved to this apartment, but this is not a permanent accommodation place, but I will be moving again. So um, I'm going to unbox all of these uh, books by genres, and then I'm going to show you all of these books together instead of picking every single book and saying, this is the book by so-and-so, and this is its plot summary. We don't want to be here forever. So the the thing that I think would be of interest is that what kind of genres I read and what kind of genres you also enjoy and so we can have similarities and we can have our differences or maybe you are just waiting for a little push to pick up that book as well. So I'm just going to show you all of the books that I have here with me. Some of my other books are at my parents so we're not going to go with there uh, but most books over there are when I was uh, younger. So we're going to um, see what kind of books I enjoy as an adult and what kind of books I like to, I like to think represent my taste. Let's get started. Okay, let's start at the biggest pile that I have, which is of different ranges of fantasy books. I think um, these may range from adult, young adult, new adult, and uh, different kinds of fantasy books, but they are basically fantasy. So we start with Six Crimson and Trains by Elizabeth Lim. I have this hardcover version absolutely gorgeous then i have the secret society of irregular witches it is very difficult to show you and pull it out then i have got song of silver flame like night then i have got tj clune house in the Cer cerulean sea this is my favorite book or one of my favorite books then i've got in the lives of puppet this is also a book that made me cry it's amazing threads that bind by kika i'm sorry but i cannot pronounce her name um i had a lot of hype about that book but i have a bit mixed feeling about this book then this is a book that i have not read yet so this is dance of thieves by mary e pearson this is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. And I liked it, but didn't love it. Carewell by Stephanie Garber. I have only read the first part and not the other two books. I'm gonna move a bit here. So then we have Metal and Bone by T. King Fisher. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a bit underwhelmed by this book. Not a big fan. Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I've read book one and two. I haven't read the last part, but I only have the first book. 
Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. It was a book of its time. With a word, this is a duology by Hannah Mathieson. And I liked it, but didn't love it. Then one of my favorite books, again, She Who Became the Sun. I need to read the second part, which is out now this month. And Daughter of the Moon Goddess. I heard mixed reviews about the second uh, part of its duology. If it's a duology, do you still call it the second serial, second edition, second sequence, second something? Anyway, so I love the first book. Not sure about the second one. Haven't read it. And these are my various ranges of fantasy books. Then I'm going to introduce these ones. I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think with, despite of their settings, these are kind of epic fantasies. Um, this is the Poppy War trilogy, um, the Poppy War, Dragon Republic, and the Burning God. I absolutely love these books, but Arif Gong is by far my favorite author of all time. Um, I love her. Ursula uh, K. Le Guin, The Earth Sea. I have only read the first part of it. I have yet to read the other four ones, but look at this edition. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I got this from Stockholm. Okay, I'm just gonna push this a little so that we can pull it, pull them out. This is Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I loved this book in the beginning. The ending, the ending left me very, very underwhelmed. I, um, I'm not the biggest fan of this fantasy series. And then Howl's Moving Castle. I think this deserves its own genre, but I don't know where else to put it. So I'm just going to put it here. This is by, um, oh, I forgot the author's names. This is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wayne Jones. And this is a very, very cute classic edition. Is it classic? No, it's not classic. It's Harper Collins edition. Okay, and that is the end of my fantasy shelf. Not bad. Editing the roots here, I also forgot that I do have the Brandon Sandon's first book, The Final Empire of the Mistborn series. I have not read this one, but I will. I just forgot to put the book there because Carowell jumped on that book and dropped it on the ground and I missed it. So there's that one as well. Keeping up with fantasy, this section I think is kind of like dark academia-esque um, genre. Um, so we have all of these Blake, one for my enemy. This is really, really a very gripping book. Just forget that the ending exists. Babel, one of my most favorite books ever. This is, whoops, this is by Arab Kuang. Half of this video, I think I'm just gonna be saying whoops and trying to pick up things that I have dropped. This is The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. This is uh, a really, really dark, earthy, grim, um, dark academia-esque uh, book in the setting. This is set in the Cloisters, the museum in New York. Then, okay, I know this is my personal opinion, but I honestly think that mythology section also belongs in Dark Academia, I don't know. Or at least the vibes are there. They're gothic, they are messy, there is a lot of immoral people around. And this one is Stephen Fry's Troy. This is kind of my own opinion. Let me know if you agree. It's a Secret History by Donna Tart. I have not yet read this book, but I will this fall. Oof. 
pretending that never happened. Then we have If We Were Villains by Emil Rioff. I have not read any of these um, Dark Academia books yet, but I definitely will this October. The Night Circus, this is one of my favorite books of all time. If you ask me literally what is your favorite book, I'm gonna say The Night Circus. Um, even though I've only read it once, but I wish I can forget it and then I can I can read it like the first time again. Then I have The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. Uh, again, I have not read this, but I will read all of these books in the ones that I have not read in October. So look forward to that and then i've got the the shadow of the wind the troublemaker the book that keeps falling and making my poor plan suffer so this is the shadow of the wind by carlos ruth seven uh zephon 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 i think um and i have really enjoyed this one i have not read the next three books but someday i will and so these are the dark academia books some people might want to call them in fantasy but i think they they represent a very different vibe and i'd rather ha keep them separate from the other fantasies the next section of these books are mostly romance books i am not a romance reader but i really really enjoy sometime a little light-hearted fluffy book which is easier to digest with all the heavy fantasy books so the first one is postscripts by cecilia ahern p.s i love you is one of my most favorite books by cecilia ahern it was the first book i read and i after then, I bought every single book that Cecilia Hearn has. And this, after years, I don't remember how many years, this is a sequel to P.S. I Love You, and I have not read this yet. As a teenager, I used to read a lot of romance books, but now, not so much. Then I got uh, Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This was fun for a one-time read. Five Feet Apart. This was very nice. I, I really, really enjoyed it. This is by Rachel Lippincott. Then we have Breakfast at Darcy by Ali McNamara. I really love From Notting Hill to, with Love actually from Ali McNamara. I read it years and years and years ago. After that, I have not picked up any other book by Ali McNamara. So, but I do have this one and I intend to read it one day. Beach Read, this was my first introduction to Emily Henry. I really, really enjoyed it, but this is the only book that I have read of Emily Henry. I have not read her other books yet. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know, depend on my mood. And this one is Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. This was actually a bookseller recommendation. She told me this is amazing and, and something, and I have yet to read it. So this is my very small books based heavily on romance, or mostly based on romance. I have a lot of them, I think, at home, but I don't reach for them anymore. Let's take a break from all the fiction books and let's go to a little bit of non-fiction. I do not read a lot of non-fiction books because my studies are mostly about non-fiction. I am a PhD student. So I read way too much nonfiction anyway, but I do have a, a small collection here. The first one is A Diary of a Bookseller by Sean Bytel. And this is a Scottish author, I think. And this is his memoir about his experience as a bookseller. Then we have got Jung's Map of the Soul. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm a big BTS army and I bought this book because of the Map of the Soul album. I have yet to read this one, but I've read uh, another Jung's book already. The next book is called Philosophy 50 Ideas in 500 Words. This is by Jeremy Stangroom. I have not read this book yet, so I cannot tell you what this is about. Then we have Silk Road by Peter Frank Copen. I think this is a whole series and I have yet to read this one. 
so I will tell you then. Whenever I read it. Then I have Tom Felton's memoir called Beyond the Wand. I think this is gonna be really funny and a little bit nostalgic as well because Harry Potter was one of the things that I really really enjoyed and I think I'm gonna make it a priority in October because this sounds really really fun. Then we have The Storyteller's Secret by Carmen Yellow. I have not read this one. <laughs> like most of my non-fiction, so I can't tell you. The last book that I have read is called The Four. This is written by Scott Galloway. This is a very interesting book that talks a lot about the power behind Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and Google. And I really, really enjoyed it. It's a very good essay. And that's all of our non-fiction. I move on to the other genres. I almost forgot that I also have these small short introduction books. So the first one is, let's go with the short introduction books first. So the first one is Knowledge. This is by Jennifer Nagel. Then we have I'll be right back. Okay, after that catastrophe, I'm finally back few essays so for example i have oscar wilde the decay of lying i have not read this one however i have read albert camus the myth of sisyphus and it really really did confuse me a lot i, I didn't get it at the first time i'm gonna be honest then we have then we have nothing by a very short introduction books. This is by Frank Close. We have Logic, Music, French Philosophy. I was pushing it too hard. Poetry and Knowledge. All by a very short all by a very short introduction books by Oxford. Okay, at this point, I have just given up. And the last book that I have not forgotten, this is not by a very short introduction. So this is Religion by Karen Armstrong and I have not read this. Frankly, <laughs> I don't remember which one I have read by a very short introduction and which one I haven't. I think I also had time by a very short introduction books, but I hated that and I give it away. So from all of these books, I think I have read poetry and music and logic. Did I read poetry? I'm not sure, but I definitely have read music and logic. And I think I have not read the other ones. So, back you go, Religion by Karen Armstrong. And these are my non-fiction books. They're about to fall. Saved it. Okay, let's move on. So after that chaos, let's go to the mystery thriller books. I do not have a lot of mystery thriller books. I don't read a lot of them. And if I do, I don't usually buy them. I just use the e-reader version or I borrow it from my library. This we have Eight Detectives by Alice, Alex Pavesi. Pavesi, I don't know how to pronounce his name, I'm sorry, but I heard really, really excellent things and look at this cover. This is absolutely gorgeous. So this is The Eight Detectives, which I have not yet read. And this is The Little Agency, The Little Lady Agency by Hester Brown. This is also a cozy mystery, I think, but I have not yet read this, this so we'll see. This is my very short mystery thriller section. I have changed the pot so hopefully now I will have a little bit easier time to record this. This is my fiction shelf. I think this is different ranges of fiction. I don't know how exactly to define them narrowly but I call them my fiction shelf. 
The first one is called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. This is by Robert M. Burgess. I have yet to read this. This is one of the recommendations of my very dear friend. I promise you I will read it one day. This is by The Plague by Albert Camus and I have read this one and this was before the COVID times. No, actually this was during the COVID times. This was in 2020, that, that's the time when I read it and I, I really got a lot of preparation, let's just say. Then this is Milan Kundra, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. You can see that there is a tag of clothes in between the pages because I tried to read it but I was not in the right state of mind so I didn't I wasn't enjoying it and I wanted to give it a fair chance then I have Sophie's world uh, by Justine Garter I really wanted an introduction to philosophy and this is a very 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 brilliant book but I think this is enough philosophy for me uh, for what it was I'm just gonna remove this so that it stops being a hurdle. Then we have the Paris Bookshop. This is by Carrie Maher. I heard that the Shakespeare and Company is based on this bookshop and I would really, really love to read this book. Usually in December and November, I read a lot of nonfiction. That's when I get into classics and nonfiction. So I would try to see if I can read this in November. Next, we have The 40 Rules of Love. This is by Alex Shafak. I have not read this. This is also a book recommendation by my really dear friend, Sarah. I will, I will read it, I promise, one day. Then, I have Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. I have read it. It was horrifying, but I get it. I get it. And then this is Ocean Wong's On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous. Can we just take a moment and see how autumnal and beautiful this book is? Absolutely gorgeous. I was waiting for Autumn to read this and I surely will. And this is my fiction self. I don't know what else to call it. Let's go to my second most read or most collected at least genre. This is translated fiction. Th these particular ones are the East Asian literature fiction, I'm not including six more books that I recently showed you in my last video. So I'm going to count them in the end but I'm not gonna show you here again. So you can see which ones those were in the last video. He he he. But for now, we're just gonna go with these books that were in the box. Okay, so the first one is I Wanna Die, But I Wanna Eat the Bookie. This is by Peck Sehi. This is translated by Anton Her. Anton Her translates a lot of Korean fiction. I was underwhelmed by this book. I'm gonna be honest, I was hoping a lot of things, but I got really underwhelmed by this book. Next, we have Banana Yoshimoto's The Kitchen. This is a Japanese literary fiction. This is amazing. If you haven't read it, please do. This is amazing. Then we have Almond by Won Pyong Son. This is a recommendation both by Kim Nam Joon and Min Yoongi. And this is really, really a very beautiful book. You might be wondering, Root, why do you have two editions of Before the Coffee Gets Cold? Because I got one as a present and because that friend is very, very dear to me, so I kept both of the editions. I usually don't like to do that, but because he is a very sweet friend, so I kept both editions. And this is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. I will be reading the other ones, but I don't know if I will be collecting them yet. So I have to read them before deciding. Then we have Concerning My Daughter. This is a recent release by Kim Hai Jin. This is translated by Ch Jamie Chang. And I have yet to read this book. This book is a bit dramatic, 
and it's very very heartfelt and emotional and i need to be in the right mindset to enjoy this book so i'm i haven't read it yet then this book is the cutest book you want to know one thing about me that is i love cats if cat disappeared from the world this is by jingi kawamura and this is a japanese literary fiction this is absolutely beautiful a must read please read it you'll know how important cats are then this is she and her cat okay nothing happened <laughs> This is She and Her Cat. This is by Makoto Shinkai. This was actually a Buddha manga, but then it got it got published as a novel format, and it still has some of the illustrations in it. If I could just show you that before all of my books fall, that would be great. So you see that? Isn't that the cutest little thing? So yeah, it still has some illustrations. I kind of I kind of expected a lot from this book, but I was a bit underwhelmed. But I gave it 3 stars. Okay, moving on. This is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I think if you have heard of one Korean book, you may have heard about this one. There is also a K-drama adapted from this book. I have not yet watched the K-drama, but I will. But the book was absolutely beautiful. This is a generational story and it will break your heart. <laughs> Oh my god, how is my pot still fine? After that miraculous recovery of my pot, which is still in one piece, I have The Vegetarian by Hong Kong. Now this book really is dark and gruesome and it's it's provoking, it is weird and I loved it. Another book by Han Kang is The Human Act. I have not yet read this one, but I will soon. I love Han Kang. There's also her latest book, Greek Lessons, is out, but I want the right edition so that it matches my other editions. Because I hate that if one is in a different format. You see, there's a little height difference even between them. Just a tiny bit. Can you see? just a tiny bit anyway then we have life this is by lu yao uh, and this is translated by chloe step i have not read this book yet but i will and now these are all the books that i have not read yet so this is sweet bean paste by durian sukagawa and i will definitely rectify that Last one, we have Marilyn and Me. This is by G. Min Lee. And I will definitely read that. I also have an audiobook for this one, so I will definitely read this one. And these are all the Asian translated fiction that I have. Then within the translated fiction genre, I have these other ones. So this all are translated fiction. These are by different authors, by different countries. So let's quickly go through them. So first of all, we have The Brothers Karamazov. This is by Fyodor Dostovsky. And this is a Russian literature. I do not know who the translator is, but I am very scared that I'm gonna make all of my books fall. The second one is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostovsky. This is a present to me and I have not yet read this. I'm sorry, I will, I will. I keep saying this, but I, I will. Okay, then all of these are presents by the same person. He is a very dear friend. Thank you, Kamran. So let's go to the Italo Calvino section. All of these are Italian literary fiction. So first we have uh, Palomar. Then we have Into the War. Then we have Under the Jaguar Sun. Then we have The Written World and The Unwritten World. I think this is a nonfiction, this is a memoir. But I kind of wanted to keep all of these books together instead of putting this one in the nonfiction one. 
and then certainly not the last book by Italo Calvino this is if on a winter's night a traveler I am reading this book and this is absolutely amazing I had to pack this book that's why I stopped reading it there you go I think we, we have a bookmark here somewhere yep we do I'm going to finish it this month for sure this month my plan is to finish all the books that I am in the middle of I am a mood reader so I'm going to finish all the books that I am in the middle of. I do have one more book by Italo Calvino, but I have lent it out. So we will just add them later in the count. Then of course we have Herman Steff's Steppenwolf. I think, please correct me if I'm wrong, that Herman has is a um, either Czech author or a German author. Let me know which um, nationality the author has but this is definitely a translated fiction and this is modern classic but there are two more books here that do not belong in the translated fiction category but they are the non-translated fiction so the first one is le petit pont so i have the english version i have the german version and i have the french version so i read this to improve my reading french and then i have taboo this is also a not translated fiction so this is a german book it's called taboo and the author is ferdinand von schirach and this is a book in german and this is my first ever book in german this was a present by jan thank you jan and i will definitely slowly slowly read this as part of practicing my german language but i like to keep them among the translated fiction books and that is all of that category then I've got a very teeny weeny middle grade section so this is nevermore series so far I am so anxiously waiting for the next series called silverborn and it's an ongoing series I absolutely love it if you are a big fan of harry potter please go ahead and read this one you will love it so this is the first book is called the trials of morgan crow this is by jessica townsend the second one is called wonder smith and the third one is called holopox the fourth one is supposed to be released for two years now but every year they seem to keep pushing it back and this one I've got Frost Heart. This is by Jamie Littler. I got it because of the book club pick for Alexander Roslin's book club. And also this is Gavin's favorite book. So I love them both. And finally, we are in our last category. My back is hurting so much now. This is my graphic novel comics edition but these are mostly graphic novels the novels that i usually buy are feel good novels the first one here is called heads aus stein this is by a french author his name is gautier almanza and these collection of books are only available in german or in french and i use them to learn my friend uh, to to learn my german <laughs> sorry this is this is a german version and yeah, I still have notes here. But the main thing that I want to show you, hang on, let's do it this way. The main thing that I want to show you in this book are the color palettes. So Kids aus Stein is about two kids. This girl, her heart is made of artichoke and this boy whose heart is made of stone. And every time we see the girl's perspective, the color change into pink. And every time we see the boy's perspective, the color changes into this really greeny, gothic, um blackish grayish greenish color <laughs> i don't know if this is and i also don't know if this is pink or purple i think this is more towards pinkish but some people could call this purplish i don't know so i will call it pinkish and greenish so they have these really beautiful dual toned illustration and the illustration is just so beautiful absolutely beautiful this one is called 
Herz aus Stein. Okay, the next book is called Geiste Gesichten aus Japan, which is Grim Tales from Japan. And this is written by Jacoby Stewart. And okay, the illustrations of this book are just gorgeous. Wait, let me find one. I did found a couple and then I, I shipped it in tight. See, these illustrations are just so breathtaking. Again, this book is in German and there is not really an English availability of this book yet. So I have yet to start this book. As you can see, I have quite a lot of reading already in my German. But look at this painting. Sorry, look at this illustration. Absolutely beautiful. They're very grim and gothic and twisted. So this is Geiste Gesichten aus Japan. Okay, now that I'm done showing you the big books because I was sure they were gonna fall, this is Everything is Okay by uh, Debbie Tung and I really, really love her books. Wait, this is gonna fall. Hang on. I really love her books. She is an illustrator and her books are very, very sweet and wholesome and somehow they talk to me. So this is Everything is Okay. This is a book about depression. I loved this one. This is Book Love by Debbie Tung. I have yet to read this one. This one is in German. Then we have The Quiet Girl, again by Debbie Tung. This is the story of an introvert. I have yet to read this one. This is also in German. And then this is my best friend's favorite book. This is called Big Panda and Tiny Dragon. This is by James Norbury. And he just released his latest book, which I got in my last video. So I hauled it there. Then the second sequel to this one is called The Journey. And it is even more amazing in my opinion than the first one, which is saying something. So this is by James Norbury. And this is one of my favorite books of all time. This is by Charlie Maxey, The Boy, The Mole, The Box, and The Horse. And I really, really love this book so much. I can read and reread and reread and reread and reread this book for hours. And I would still be very happy. There you have it. That's my last graphical novel. And that's it. These are all of the books that I had in those three boxes. Plus the 10 books that I hauled last in my last video. Here are those books. And I lent, uh, I think four or five books. I'm not sure. I don't remember uh, how many books I uh, lent to a friend. She is a really, really sweet and dear friend. We are bookish besties. We love to talk about books, me and her. And uh, we love also to exchange books. So um, I give her a few of my books and I don't remember, but hopefully she does. Um, and then there's my Song of Achilles uh, book, which I do not remember for the life of me. I don't remember who I lent it to, but I no longer have it here. So if you're watching and I lent it to you, can you please return my book? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so that's it. If you are still here, please don't forget to comment down below. What was your estimated guess that how many books do I have in those three boxes that I unboxed um, and are right here? And I can you see this book is again tilting and I think it's about to fall. So before any of the further books fall, let me tell you how many books there, there were in total in the box. So I will put it on the screen here. And this is the number of books that I have um, in general here with me. I do have more books, but they are at my parents. So that's another day, another video. In total, I have these many read books and these many unread books, and I will try to make sure that I read more of these books. For this month, my plan is to basically finish all of the books that I am in the middle of. Um, if you would like to know um, which books they are, please let me know in the comments below. Type a yes, and um, 
I will try to get back to you. If you are here, please tell me what is the book that you absolutely love and what is the book that you want me to read right now. Thank you so much for watching me in pain. Thank you so much for staying with me. If you love this chaos, please consider liking this video as it really do help my channel and subscribe for more videos which will be coming soon. For now, I really need to take a nap as I'm very tired and I will see you in the next video. Turning Pages, signing off. Bye!